Good morning, this is Ms. Billerbeck, and we're going to talk about volumes and surface areas of solids today. So first, um, we want to look at a cube. So if a cube is four inches, um, then it's four inches on every side. So the width, the length, and the height. Now this is an example of if we had cut the cube apart and laid it out, there's many different ways we could draw this. Here's a teeny example here. It could look like that as well. So there's a lot of different ways we could draw these. They're called nets. Okay, so this is the actual solid. And this is called a net. Okay, so there's a lot of ways we could draw it if we were just to fold out the flat faces like a piece of paper. All right, so let's find the volume and the surface area of this, this um, cube. All right, oh, here it is. Sorry about that. Way over here. All right, so the volume is defined as length times width times height for a rectangular prism. So if with a cube, the length, the width, and the height are all equal, then that means that the volume could also be defined for a cube. So this is just a cube as L cubed, length cubed, width cubed, or height cubed. So if we had four inches, a four inch cubed um, solid, that would be four inches times four inches times four inches. So the volume then would be four times four times four is 16, 16 times four is 64, and then we have one, two, three. So we have three inches, so we're gonna, uh, in inches units, so we're gonna put inches cubed. <clears throat> now, if we have surface area, surface area is twice times length times width, twice times height times width, and twice times length times height. Well, let's look at why. Now let's look at this. Oh, I see. I have two of the same colors in each spot and, you know, opposite each other for this cube. When I lay it out, there's pairs of sides that are the same. So if they're the same, they have the same area. So just to make it more efficient, I'm just saying two of these areas plus two of these areas plus two of those areas right here, okay? So that's what I'm doing with this formula. So then again, the cube, everything's the same. So this could be, this could be two L squared plus two L squared plus two L squared. So two plus two plus two is six L squared. It could also be two W squared plus two W squared plus two W squared, which would make it six W squared. Or the same thing with the H. So since we know that this is four, we're gonna put surface area here equals six times four inches, and we're gonna square it. So our surface area then would be six times, and that'd be four inches times four inches. So we have surface area equals, and six times four is 24 inches times four inches. So that gives us a surface area, and four times four is 16, carry one four times Two is eight plus one is a nine. So that gives us nine inches. And there's two of those inch units. So we're going to put inch squared. So area, it's always inches squared. Volume, 
it's inches cubed because volume is three-dimensional and area is two-dimensional. So let's look at example two. So example two, we have a surface area of a cube now. And we need to find the length of the side of the cube. So we know from the previous example that for a cube, the surface area is six times L squared. We also know that the surface area is 294 centimeters squared. Now, how do we get that six away from the L squared? That's right, we divide by six. So that gives us L squared equals, and then six goes into 29 four times, leaving five left over. So there's a 54. Six into 54 goes into nine times, so that's nine centimeters squared. So if we were to take the square root of both sides to find L, this would be the square root of 49 centimeters squared. And if we break that down, we have seven centimeters times seven centimeters. So remember, it's a bad neighborhood and you can't leave home unless you leave in pairs. So we have a pair. So they get to leave home as a united front of seven centimeters. And that's the length of the side. So now we can find the volume quickly by just saying volume equals seven centimeters cubed. So seven centimeters cubed is just seven centimeters times seven centimeters times seven centimeters. And that happens to be 343 centimeters cubed. 49 times seven. Okay, so there we have it for example two and how you find a missing side. Okay, example three, change it up a little from your book. Your book was talking about copper, but I like titanium. Titanium is so much stronger than copper and it's really a cool alloy. So a block of titanium is 10 centimeters by nine centimeters by four centimeters. So when we get a situation like this, I like to draw. So it's geometry we're doing right now. So drawing is very important in geometry. So those of you who are artists should be very good or should aspire to be very good at geometry because if your art doesn't have good geometry it kind of is difficult on those of us who appreciate good geometry okay so we have 10 centimeters and then we're going to write nine centimeters and then we have four centimeters so that's how we draw our shape so we want to find the volume. Well, volume is probably the most, that is the easiest thing. So um, let's call this the width, the length, and the height. So we're doing length times width times height. So let's start with nine centimeters, 10 centimeters, and four centimeters. And because of the commutative property of multiplication, it doesn't matter which order we put these in as long as they're multiplying um, and there's one of each. So keeping that in mind, the commutative property of multiplication, I can multiply nine times four, which is 36 times 10, which is 360. So that's how I do fast math. And then I have three of those centimeters. So I say centimeters cubed because it's volume Volume is three-dimensional. So now we want to find the surface area. So surface area, if you remember, it's going to be two times 
length times width plus two times length times height plus two times height times width. Okay, so we have S surface area. SA is two times nine. And I'm going to skip the units for now, just for room. And then plus two times nine times four plus two times four times W. So this is a good idea to label these when you're you're doing this because you want to make sure none of these pairs are the same. So see how these are all different number pairs. Okay, so that's important. So we have two times nine is eighteen times ten is one eighty, and then we have um, two times four is eight. Eight times nine is seventy two. Plus, and this is two times four is eight times 10 is 80. Okay, when we add that up, these two are easiest to add. So 180 plus 80 is 260. Take a 40 out of that, you have 300. And so you have 332. And we're talking about centimeters squared because it's area. So what I did is fast mass. So that's 40 plus 32. So when I had 260 and I added 40, that made 300. And then I had that other 32 to add, so 332. So that's what I did in my head. So if you learn fast math, it is very helpful. So now we're looking at the volume. Okay, so let's take this. We're going to put it under serious heat and melt it down. And then we're going to make it into a cube with the same volume, because the volume doesn't get lost at all. When we melt it down, like taking ice, and you melt the ice down, and it's the same volume that the ice cube was, it's just in a different form. So now we need to find out, well, if we put this into a cube, what's the length of the side? So volume of the cube, it's going to be side cubed. But we found that that's the volume of the material of titanium. So we're going to go and do that. What I would suggest is to do a factor, prime factorization tree at this point. So I would take the 360 and take a 2 out. And that gives you uh, 180 and take another 2 out. And that gives you a 90. And you can take another two out. And that gives you 45. Then you take a 45 plus 5 adds up to a multiple of 3. Because it adds up to 9. 9 can be divisible by 3. So we know 45 can be divisible by 3. And that gives us 1, 5. Um, and then 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 is divisible by 3. So that is also divisible by 3. So we just did a prime factorization tree. So what we're going to do to find S is we're going to take a cube root. So we're going to take a cube root of a cube to find out what S is. So that means we're not talking about a bad neighborhood. We're talking about a very bad neighborhood. So we can't leave home unless we leave in groups of three. Okay, so we see that this is a group of three and it gets to leave home. So we have S equals, so we have two out there. It leaves as a united front of two. But then we have three times three times five left in the house. So they're alone, so they stay home. So that's 45. And then this would be, there was a centimeters cubed in that. So oops, I don't want to put that in this cube root. Okay, so, and then this is all going to be centimeters. So that's how we'd find the side. 
Now, if we were to use a calculator and we wanted the cube root of 360, instead of breaking down the prime factoring tree. Okay, so um, let me clear this. All right, so let's look at how we would do that. So if we put in um, parentheses, 360 parentheses, actually, I don't think you need, let's do it this way, 360, and then do this little caret thing, which means exponent. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So if we're taking a cube root, and this is advanced math, so I wouldn't expect it of you, but if you're curious, this is how you do it. So you're going to divide, you're going to make the exponent one third. So when you do that, you get the, the exact number that the cube root is. Okay, so this is the same thing as 7.11 centimeters. Okay, so kind of crazy, huh? That, that, that exponent there, that's the same thing. A one-third exponent is the same thing as taking a cube root. So what do you think the exponent is when we're taking a square root? That's right, it'd be four, it'd be one half. So if we took, made that, we know that the square root of four is two. That's right. So we do one divided by two. And we get two. If we do that to nine, we get three. Okay, so that's kind of advanced, but you know, if you want to use the calculator sometimes that to do these square roots and have the exact number, that's how you do it. All right, they also, some calculators do have a square root, but they don't normally have a cube root and things like that, so. There you go. Now you know. Okay, so a rectangular prism. So it's 13 centimeters long. So again, it's geometry we draw. And you're going to be really good at drawing once you get beyond geometry. So we have 13 centimeters long and six centimeters high, and we don't know what the width is. Okay, we do know the volume is this. So we have volume equals W times six centimeters times 13 centimeters equals 624 centimeters cubed. Well, six times 13, six times three is 18, carry the one. So we have 78 centimeters squared <laughs> equals 624 centimeters squared. All right, so we have W, we want W by itself and it's being multiplied by a 78 centimeters squared. So we need to get rid of that by dividing by 78 centimeters squared. Okay, if you notice, we have centimeters cubed over centimeters squared. So if, um, if we had centimeters times centimeters times centimeters over centimeters times centimeters, these cancel and we have one centimeter left. Okay, so that's a good thing because we're trying to find the width and we want width in centimeters. All right, the other thing we need to do is find what a 624 is divided by 78. So top dog goes in the house. So we have 78 and we're gonna divide by 624. So if we round this to 80 and kind of round that to the nearest number that uh, 80 would go into is 6,400. Nice, sweetie. Um, 
And then that would go in about eight times because eight times eight is 64. So let's try eight. So eight times eight is 64, carry a six. Eight times seven is 56, plus two, uh, six is 62. Well, look at that, we got it right off. So that means that W is eight centimeters. So we found the width and now let's see, what is its volume? Wait, we already, Oh, we already know the volume, so that's all they wanted is what was the width. So voila, we did it. We could find the surface area if you really wanted to be an overachiever. Hey, let's do it. Okay, so surface area is 2 times length times width plus 2 times length times height plus 2 times height times width. So the surface area then would be 2. And this was our length and our height. So we had 13 and the width was eight plus two times 13 times six plus two times six times the W which was eight. So we write that all down. And two, that's 26. Okay, let's do a little 26 times eight. So that gives us 48 is 208. So we have 208. There's a little multiplication going on there. 26 times six is 36. And then that gives us 156. Okay, and then plus, and then that gives us 12 times 8, and 12 times 8 is 96. Okay, so then we're adding them all up. You know, the easiest way to add numbers like this is in a column. So let me um, erase this and we'll do a quick column. So 208. 156 and 96, we're adding them together. So we have 14 plus six is 20, carry a two. Two plus five is seven, plus nine is 16, carry one. And it, we have 460 and our units, centimeters squared, there we go. All right. So you have a wonderful day. I hope you find a lot of happiness today. I know it's being home has gone on for a long, long time. But keep up the hard work. Keep focused. Keep working on your future. Bye.